Hi students, in this class we shall discuss dispersion from statistics, measures of central tendency and dispersion. Okay. So, what is dispersion? Dispersion is the measure of scatterness. It is the measure of scatterness or spread of data. Dispersion is the measure of scatterness or spread of data. Here we try to measure how scattered the data is from some point. Okay, this point is usually the mean or the median. Okay, the measure of central tendency. Okay, so but why do we measure this? Okay, we measure it because see two different distributions may be having a different scatter or they may have a different um, range. Okay, but they may have the same measure of central tendency or they may have the same mean, they may have the same median, but they may be differently distributed. Okay. So, let us look and understand what is there through this diagram. Okay. Consider this is curve A, this is curve A, the red one, this one is curve A, this curve A. Okay. Here what we observe is that the mean is located here. Okay. The mean is located here okay same way the second curve or the blue curve this is the blue curve for example this curve will have this is curve b this curve b also has the mean down here x bar and the third one third one also has the same position okay of mean but we can observe that see they are differently spread the first one the red one is spread from here to here this is the region in which it is spread same way the second one is spread from here to here and the third one is spread from this point to this point so we can understand that the two three different distributions have different spreads or they are scattered in a different manner but all these three have the same measure of central tendency okay that is what we may, we need to understand that different distributions may have the same measure of central tendency that is the first important characteristic may be identical but the they may differ on the account of scatterness they may be differently scattered okay so what is dispersion dispersion for a given set of observations is defined as the amount of deviation or spread of the observations from an appropriate measure of central tendency mean or median. Okay. So, this is a curve for example. Okay. And this is the mean x bar. So, this is the dispersion or the deviation amount of deviation of the observations from the mean. Amount of deviation of the observation from the mean from here to here. Some observations are here, some observations are here, the corresponding deviations can be obtained. Okay. Now, the dispersions, the measures of dispersion are also sometimes called measures of variation, rarely called, but they are sometimes called measures of variation or they are also known as average of second order. They are measures of dispersion are known as averages of second order, average of average averages of second order now we shall think what are the averages of first order the averages of first order is the measures of central tendency that is mean median and mode are known as averages of first order here dispersion we will discuss different measures of dispersion and they are all classified under averages of second order okay so, they are also known as averages of scatterness, averages of scatterness, averages of scatterness or averages of second order. Okay. First of all, we shall discuss what are the characteristics of an ideal measure of dispersion. What should be an ideal measure? These are our concepts. Okay. First is that the ideal measure of dispersion should be properly defined it should be clearly defined so that everybody can understand okay any person can understand it in the same sense second one is that it, it should be easily comprehensible or easily understood okay the third property is that it should 
it should be easy to calculate or simple to compute. Then it should be based on all the observations. These are ideal characteristics. Okay. It may not be applicable or it may not be satisfied by each and every type of dispersion, each and every measure. But we will try to uh, settle down with some or most of the characteristics. Okay. Then it should be unaffected by sampling fluctuations and it should be further usable in case of mathematical treatment or it should be further usable in some other applications. Okay. The characteristics of an ideal measure of dispersion are that it should be properly defined, it should be easy to com comprehend, it should be simple to compute, it should be based on all the observations, it should be unaffected by sampling fluctuations. Even if certain fluctuations are happening in the sample, still the measure should not be affected. Okay, That is what is desired, not always true, but that is what is desired. It should not remain unaffected by sampling fluctuations then it should be further applicable in mathematical study. Okay. Next, we shall discuss the types of dispersion. We have dis uh, discussed that. What is dispersion? Dispersion is the measure of scatterness. Dispersion, dispersion is the measure of measure of spread or scatterness. of data right now we shall discuss the different measures of the spread or scatterness or dispersion okay the first one is that they can be distributed or further classified into two parts the first one is absolute measures of dispersion and then we have relative measures of dispersion there are two types of dispersions okay the measures of dispersion are classified into two types. First one is absolute measure of dispersion and the second one is relative measure of dispersion. Now, we shall discuss which are absolute measures of dispersion and, and their corresponding relative measures of dispersion. Okay. The first measure of dispersion is absolute measure is range and range we know that it is range is defined as R is equal to the highest observation or the highest value minus the smallest value in the given data set. Okay, the largest value minus the smallest value, the largest value minus the smallest value and the corresponding relative measure of dispersion is given as the co is known as the coefficient of range. Okay, next we shall discuss the second absolute measure which is mean deviation and the corresponding one is called coefficient of mean deviation. Then we have standard deviation and the corresponding relative measure is coefficient of standard deviation or what we call them call it as the coefficient of variation okay fourth one is quartile deviation here we have the relative measure corresponding to quartile deviation as the coefficient of quartile deviation okay these are the different measures of dispersion absolute measures of dispersion are range mean deviation, standard deviation and quartile deviation. The relative measure corresponding to range is coefficient of range. The relative measure of dispersion or relative measure of dispersion to mean deviation is coefficient of mean deviation. Okay. The corresponding measure of standard deviation is coefficient of variation, coefficient of variation or C. P. Okay, range is denoted as R, mean deviation is MD about some mean or me mean or median. Okay, we shall discuss this each one of them in detail separate video. Okay, range will be discussed in a separate video, mean deviation will be discussed in a separate one and standard deviation will be discussed in a separate one. Same way, quartile deviation also will be discussed in a separate video. This is QD quartile deviation okay standard deviation is sd or sigma sd or sigma coefficient of variation is cv so this is what we need to understand in this chapter for this video 
Now we shall discuss what are the differences uh, between absolute measure of dispersion and relative measures of dispersion. Okay. Now of dispersion of dispersion. Okay. Absolute measure. In case of absolute measure, the absolute measure and the original data, they are expressed in the same statistical unit. They are expressed in the same statistical units. The absolute measure of dispersion is expressed in the same statistical unit in which the original data is given. Okay. The relative measure of dispersion is expressed as a ratio of the measure of absolute dispersion to an appropriate average. Okay. The relative measure of dispersion is expressed as the ratio of the measure of absolute dispersion to an appropriate average. Okay. Now, say for example, mean deviation is MD about some average A, then the coefficient of mean deviation is defined as MD about A divided by A into 100. Okay. This is how we define the relative mean deviation. This is mean deviation and this is relative mean deviation. Okay. Coefficient of mean deviation. Okay. Absolute measure are suitable for comparing variability in two or more distributions having variables expressed in the same statistical units. Okay. If two distributions have the same statistical units, then they can be compared using absolute measures. But in case what happens if uh, we have different distributions in different units, in that case we make use of relative measures like percentages. Okay. Uh, we use percentages to compare two different commodity to different measures. So, we can compare them using percentages. So, same way we can use the relative measures as they are also expressed in terms of percentages. Okay. So, multiplied by 100 and so it becomes percentage. So, relative measures are suitable for comparing the variability in two or more distributions having variables expressed either in the same statistical units or different statistical units. Since they are all reduced to the same level. Now, the absolute measure is useful when two or more distributions are of the same size on an average. Relative measures are useful when two of two or more of them are of the similar size on the same average. Also, even if they are different on different sizes, okay. If they are um, one is a large distribution, the other one is a small distribution, st still they can be compared on the basis of a relative measure. Okay. The fourth and the last property is that absolute measures do not help much in comparing. Means absolute measures are not used generally for comparison. Absolute measures are generally not used for comparing and understanding the facts. But relative measures play an important role in understanding and comprehending the different distributions and also comparing them in detail. Okay. So, relative measures help in compare, relative measures help in comparing and understanding the facts in a comprehensive manner while the absolute measures do not help much in comparing and understanding. Sometimes they can be used for comparing but only in certain cases like they have the same units, they are having the same average and all. In that case, we shall use absolute measures. Otherwise, generally relative measures are used. Okay. That's it for this video. We shall take each one of the measures, each one of the measures. Okay. Which are the range, mean deviation, standard deviation and quartile deviation one by one in different videos so that I can keep the videos short. Thank you.